He did. Lee talk, talked about, uh, and Lee actually, I think Lee actually introduced me to a video. I think it was a lady who was talking about it. Was that the video? I think. As you talk about how you innovate and create friction, but that friction creates the the, the environment for new ideas and taking small risks. Um, and in fact, today I was in the, in my leadership induction, and um, data analytics uh, person was talking about uh, fail fast, learn quick, and I thought that was really cool. And they were taking all these little um, little risks, trying little things, and you know, I think what you talk about, like experiments, um, but this all came off the back of everybody getting together and sharing ideas. And so that's what I really want to talk about um, today. And I suppose, Lee, I'm going to ask you a question um, because you're really heavily into this. And I was going to, I'm going to have got a little diagram I'm going to reveal a bit later about how we need to sort of, how we can start building it. But Lee, you talk about this a lot and you did a lot of stuff. Well, you, you, I think you probably still do a lot of stuff around this. I mean, I know you had a little project going on, which was really cr great. And I think it's still got um, a tail of it, I think you said about earlier. But do you want to just um, give us a little bit of an example of how you, I mean, synergy is the habit, um, but how you collaborated and used, you know, people's ideas, even people you don't agree with, um, but built new ideas off the back of that and how that's affected and, and how effective that was. Anyway. This, sorry, we had a slight glitch in our YouTube there, so I was momentarily distracted, but it's a good moment to say, if you want to join us live, and there isn't a glitch, just as for Jose Noy Inspiration Nation on YouTube, we are trying to drive up those YouTube numbers, so please, please hit subscribe. It helps us, and you will get notified when we go live each and every week. And of course, there's loads of people with us right now on TikTok, Noyer underscore Inspiration Nation. Join us live there too, as well as getting to see Joe's handsome mug every single day. So is this my, my program I used to run, Joe? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, you don't run it anymore. Is it, is it now its own thing now? Well, I, I do. It's, it's, I don't know. It's kind of amalgamated into the whole job. But anyway, I just wanted the context of what I was talking about. No, I still do. I did one in February, I'm going to say. The last one. So the place that I work, I run a, a an ideas change innovation forum type thing. And the whole idea is to kind of get everyone who wants to be involved in change, thinking about doing things different, bringing ideas to the table, talking about ideas, discussing ideas. So yeah, it's an idea I came up with. I say an idea I came up with. Obviously, lots of places and people, businesses do this type of thing. This is an idea I emulated and brought into my place of work. I'm going to say six, seven years ago now, Joe, maybe something in that. I have that the original video. Oh, do I you? Put it, I, put it, I think I put it on YouTube. Obviously, it's very private. I've not released it. It's just there, sitting there. I saw it somewhere recently. Yeah, just suit on and everything. Reason. It yeah, was brilliant. Very... Yeah, just suit jacket on. I looked like some sort of 1990s newsreader, didn't I? It was a bit wooden. It was brilliant. But this is the whole start, right? But it also um, also was a bit dark, the video, I remember. And I look back, oh, I so dark, that video. Anyway, I carry on. The legal Not film. as natural in front of the camera as I am these days, I would say. Mm. But, mm. and that was part of it. it but it was, it was that. It was just, you know, it was running roundtable sessions, getting people in the room, people talking about ideas, hopefully getting people involved in their, supporting bringing their ideas to life not just thanks very much and leave the room again and it was that you know it was, it was engagement piece and ideas piece and looking to bring out innovation and one of the things I was very deliberate about was you know the tone and the setup and the structure and if you like uh, and bringing bringing different people in making sure people felt comfortable you know that whole there's no idea is a stupid idea but really encouraging people to bring out landish ideas and different ideas and actually even if it's something that I would disagree with or more so if it's something that my instinct said we probably can't do that we're still encouraging the conversation to talk things out and see what comes from things and 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 run them through um so there's you know there's a there's a structure you can bring to these sort of things that again it encourages innovation word you said therefore joe and and, and collabor collaboration it is difficult to say it wasn't just you and working together and people not being afraid to throw even throw out an idea that might not be a good idea just to get the conversation going and not feeling judged about it and those being some of the kind of principles that are applied and i'll say the back end joe so it probably doesn't tie into what we're talking here but one of the most important things is then the follow-up is being really disciplined and making sure there's then uh, a follow-up people can see what's happening with things and actually you know months later you 
revisit what was talked about. I, and I do this now. So I say I run these probably six monthly. And one of the most important things I do is when I'm gearing up for the next session, so probably a couple of months out, so four months after the last one, is to reshare what was talked about and give an update on where that was and where that's gone to and keep you know building up a catalogue so people can see that you know these things do go somewhere it's just sometimes they take a bit of time that's probably yeah, a longer uh, answer than you were looking for but hopefully that gives you something no. to work with no i think that's a really good answer because i think the follow-up is really important because if you if i shared an idea and then no follow-up and there's no mention of it later then i'm not going to be participating because i don't i wouldn't think think that my idea is valued right um, but even if it wasn't taken up and the idea was say oh we couldn't do it but this is the reason why we couldn't do it then there's much more investment because i'm willing to put forward something else right so i think it's really, really important also it's talking about like the coaching element of that is um follow up is okay where's the timeline where's the line in the sand and when things going to start happening because again without timelines it never doesn't happen so i think you know almost you're looking back down the mounting action steps are all critical for you know making these things happen and this is what synergy is about so in the book stephen covey so i was having a read of it talks about nature and how you know, even nature works together. So if you've got two plants, he talks about it in one of his, in part of his book, two plants to get together, their roots intertwine. And because they're working together, the soil is actually more fertile. So they grow stronger when plants are together. I know some, you know, so what I'm trying to say here is that we should be doing more of this. And what I can give you an example of what I'm actually trying to do at the minute. And, and everyone you know here is that I'm passionate about coaching, right? Oh, really? I did not know that about you. No, I did not know that about you. So at the moment, I am trying to really build this coaching culture. And, uh, and one of the steps I've taken to build synergy and to build collaboration is to actually, because at the moment I'm trying to bring all the coach, not just the coach, in, in our businesses or the business that, that, that I, well, the business I'm working at the minute, you know, we all have coaches and coaching is a real thing you know, now. Um, it's, very, it's, it's quite a corporate word now, but it means different things to different people. But what I'm trying to do with our coaching is one, is the coach we're doing real coaching and two how do we how do we get all the coaches together because synergy is about working together right so what's happening at the minute we've got coaches in one area because one area, they're working great and they're doing their work but they're doing it in their own areas they're not actually cross-pollination i call it i don't know whether that's the thing but i want them to I like it i want them to cross-pollinate because i think you know something that could work in one area is probably going to work it might work well in another area. and likewise if, if one area's got a problem someone may have already come across that problem solved it and then could pass the best practice on in a coaching way so what i've developed is i've, I've used teams and what i've done is i've just put i've, I've put everyone through a program this it's a program that um, i run at this, uh, this 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 company i work for and um every time anybody goes through that there's probably about over a hundred people in this community i've put set up a teams chat and now i've set up and now we're sharing ideas in there i'm asking people to share stories and so what I've now I'm trying to do is get people to help each other through a coaching community. And so that is what we we that's what I'm building at the moment. Um and that for me is part of that synergy piece. Um and even when I'm running these sessions, I'm asking people to contribute and be honest. Cuz another part of synergy is actually to accept that not everyone's going to agree. And you know how you deal with disagreement could be a real it could either block you coming up to an even better idea and building an idea or actually you know if you start to go well i want my idea to be the best idea then that's when you block synergy you've got to work with those ideas and build and build and build until you come up with something maybe that's actually totally unique built off the back of maybe disagreement but it's respectful disagreement so off the back of that i do have something that will that will help um it's like a diagram um and i quite like it because you've got here if i put it onto the counter people can hear that so you've got cooperation and trust and on there you've got the three levels there so really what this is talking about how we get high levels of trust i'll just start to tick to real quickly so you can see i'm just hold up for a second that's good um, just to describe that out quickly for those that are listening joe yeah you've so a, a graph in terms there, of, yeah. so down on the is it called the cross the axis the, the axis they cross the the, the the vertical line um you've got trust high trust and you've got high cooperation um but if you've got you've got so if you've got on one side the high to low low to high yeah and on the across axis you've got low to high if you've got low low trust and low cooperation you get defensive win lose that's when you know if you present an idea and then someone wants to trump that idea so oh, i don't really like that i'm going to do this that's when you don't get anywhere 
because you're trying to win and they're going to lose, right? We talked about win-lose in the previous episode, so it is about everyone trying to get to a win-win scenario because then we can build and build and build. Even if we, if we disagree, how can we then get to a win-win so everyone's getting, getting something out of it? Then there's the middle part where it's the trust, where it's like in the middle of trust and in the middle of cooperation, sort of the middle part of this, this diagram, um, which is called respectful compromise. Now, that still can work, but the thing is, if you're compromising, um, you know, you might be giving in just for the sake of, oh, I just want to agree, right? So it's about shaping ideas and shaping conversations so you're still bringing the best of your idea to actually build something that's better than what you thought of in the first place through those disagreements and challenges, right? And that last step of this is the high level, high trust and high cooperation where you get the, they call it synergistic win-win. And that's your own form. I'm not saying that's easy. I'm just going to just display that again. So that's, that's really where it is. So if you are listening, it might be worth going to the YouTube channel and just having a look at that. So that's what I mean by that. Now, it can be very challenging. Um, I think definitely in coaching is challenging because people have different different ideas. But um, so that's really where I'm coming from on that. And uh, as I say, is there so for you, Lee? Have you got anything going on at the moment where you know? Because I think one of the hardest things that we can get challenged on is where we don't necessarily agree with someone. Um, hello, stop motions. Okay, if you just put the question in the chat, stop motions. I'll do that. I will. will work, I'll. I'll put it into the podcast. Is there any? Is there been any time when you're at the moment, Lee, where you've had? You don't agree with someone, but you've 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 got to a place where even though you disagreed, you did create something great. Is there any examples of you can think about where that happened? Yes, for a simple answer, but I don't know. I'd put a slant on the disagreement to an extent. So I'm, I'm currently working on a large a large project in my role, and a big part of what I do is about understanding what the needs are of the business and then looking at solutions and ensuring those kind of solutions get delivered and, and come up with the outcome that's needed and sometimes that's me going away and coming up with ideas and saying to people is that right a lot of the time that's reaching out to other people and finding out what their needs are you know distilling where the the business value is from that helping support come up with solutions so quite often it's not even whether i disagree i might be almost neutral to what the idea is and i'm there just to kind of draw out the best for people understand what it is they really want sometimes help them understand what's what's wanted and so and within some of that i have come up across especially where we're implementing technology that brings sweeping change and there's certain things that have really challenged certain practices that i've held for years and actually we need to completely relook at that and i'm almost kind of at the forefront of having that change of mentality and then hoping others then 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 follow the way of me so i've had to really challenge myself on it and actually where you do open yourself up to other ways of doing things where you even if almost it's tried and tested that something doesn't work being able to revisit it in a different context i think is is a really good way to start bringing stuff forward you know just not writing stuff off the table straight away not being afraid to experiment so i've been doing a lot of that in the last year and i've you know i have had times where i've had people who've got very different views on the ways to do things and actually you kind of end up with something that's incorporates different elements of different people's ideas and i think that's what brings the best through i think you very seldom do the best ideas come from one person who you know does everything in a dark room themselves and comes out with this fantastic thing at the end of it yeah i really like that because I, the whole thing is go on are you gonna say i was just, I was just gonna say i think there'd probably be a time 10 15 years ago where i'd have thought no going in and just coming up and being like this is it is what to do but that's that's definitely not it's the the whole collaboration piece just makes things better yeah and i think it's a bit of vulnerability in that isn't there as well like you know being open for you to change your perspective and accepting that actually that, that your way may be a little bit outmoded but actually how can you build on that maybe maybe not entirely scrap it but it might be that you need to rethink something that will make it even better right um, some old paradigms i suppose and that vulnerability is, actually... is a good word i like that do you like that I yeah, do. yeah it's these old, old scripts that we have that we you know the way we've always done it right the way we've always done things and we get into a pattern and um 
this sort of thinking and this sort of synergy will actually when people say oh we should try this will actually make you look at your patterns and your paradigms and actually think oh maybe i need to do need to like revisit that and actually what you're talking about change the way i'm thinking about certain things and that can create a new way of thinking and a better way of thinking um, an improved way of thinking um, and that's why we need that friction um, and actually that vulnerable portability piece talks about that trust and respect so when we talk about that diagram the trust is like when you're vulnerable and you say hey look i've tried this this didn't work or you know i'm open to, to change then you build trust and say you know in fact in one of these sessions i had today um you know, i was i was actually talking to people we talk about leadership today um i had a leadership induction that I, I, that I run and i was being open and honest about the, the mistakes that i made in leadership and uh and and when i did that i you could see the trust build in the room and i do this quite a bit because usually you have to, to, to build to build trust you need to go first with being vulnerable and then other people will start to pile on on that and start to go, do you know what I've done this? Because, you know, that's the, another thing that Stephen talks about in his book. Be honest about where you are, what, you, what, what you're failing at um, or what you failed at because other people then say, do you know what, I've had trouble with that. And, and a lot of times, a lot of people have had the same challenges. Thank you for the likes, by the way, Stop Motions. And ask a question, I really appreciate it. So I was talking about, in fact, I'll tell you what the example was. And this created a great discussion. I actually remember running a team and... Um, I said, I don't know if I told this one before, but I remember there was a per there was a person in my team, and they were not performing very well at all. This is a story I tell quite a lot of my leadership inductions to to say, to, to, hey, look, I'm running this session, but by all means, I am still learning, just like you. And um, this person wasn't performing, so what I said to them was, I said to them, your failure is my failure. I don't know, uh, Lee, can you guess what happened as a result? Can you guess what their performance happened to their performance when I said that? Oh, I've oh, broken broke the camera. I'm still here though. Are we I'm, still there? All oh, right. Okay. Can you have a, I'm can guessing, have a guess? I'm guessing, Joe, that their performance either stayed where it was or maybe even got even worse than it was in the first place before you had that conversation. It did get worse. And what do you think they did when I said, oh, you, you know, when I sort of chat, not chat, I suppose the word was when I, when we, when we started to review the performances, I think Lee's back, we, I can't see him. When we started to review the performance, what do you think there, what do you think? What do you think? Um, how, where do you think they? What do you think they thought they said the reason was for their low performance? Their continued low performance off the back. I would dare say, Joe, that they would say it's not their fault; it's your fault because yeah, you've already said. That's exactly you. what happened. What I did is I took accountability away from them, um, and they then they clearly just said, "Well, it's all your fault." They didn't have to do any work, right? So that's one of the stories I tell, and when I tell that story. I start to get other, you know, I start to get other other people talking about what they are great at. They weren't great at what's happened, what they've learned, how they've learned. So going back to this whole piece about synergy it is all about being vulnerable. You know, try and accept that you, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be right quite a lot of the time, um, and being open and creating that win-win scenario and building on people's ideas because you know once you hear their idea you might incorporate a bit of your idea so the the, the 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 whole point of this is to build an idea that's off the back of both your ideas so you get something that's that you know you, like you said like, like lee said a lot of time your idea is not going to be the greatest idea but it's when you m merge the ideas to start discussing it that's when the good idea comes and actually in the book he talks about when they did this synergistic thing for a corporate uh, mission statement that she went up high into the mountains and they then they started talking about this this mission statement but what they did they were very vulnerable they were very open and honest and they created an environment where they could just really really be honest about what this mission statement should be and uh, you should go read that because it's a really inspiring piece of the book so yeah really really enjoyable so what i want to do really is i want to sort of sort of just go through the last bits of this book because there's some great little activities and i think i'm just going to list these uh for you um on this book so so some suggestions on synergy let me just read them to you so this is going to be quite challenging so if you are listening or you're watching write these down uh, or rewind the video or pause or pause the, the podcast but um, i'm going to go through so number one is think about a person who typically sees things differently than you do consider ways in which consider ways in which those differences might be used as stepping stones to a third alternative solutions i.e., building on the ideas perhaps you could seek out their views on a current project or problem valuing the different views you are likely to hear number two make a list of people who irritate you and then do they then so then go with do they represent different views that could lead to synergy if you had greater intrinsic security and value the difference so essentially that's what that's saying is that can you get their views 
can you be certain of yourself and take that, that maybe that, that constructive criticism and build from there? Security center that you can deal with that feedback or the, the, the challenges. Number, number three, identify a situation which you desire greater teamwork and synergy. What conditions would you would need to exist to support synergy? What can you do to create those conditions? And I think this goes back to what you created, Lee, with your um, with your project. And it's something that I try and create in my in my training sessions. That that element of trust where people can feel that they can say whatever you know and feel that it's not going to go anywhere and actually be trusted that it can be taken and go. It won't be you know what's the word pull pull down um, and then it will be listened to. And the last one is that the next time you have a disagreement or confrontation with someone, attempt to understand the concerns underlying that person's position, address those concerns in a creative and mutually beneficial way. So what, what he's saying there is you are then trying to be create something that you can get a solution that doesn't criticise them, but you're trying to get the win-win so you both benefit from the conversation rather than having the bite heads and one's got to lose that's what well, that's what he's saying there so address the concern in a creative way and mutually beneficial way so we both try and get the win though that's very it's quite challenging and quite difficult but there you go any thoughts on those exercises lee it's really uh lazy to say i agree with them all isn't it but i like i like well, how i do it's no, so okay. remember we've got to trust right if that's what you think that's what you think right I, but I do, I do think they, and I think we might have talked about this last week, and it feeds into another idea I've got from another podcast. But it kind of challenges your kind of that human defence nature, doesn't it? So I think there's there's something in there where you've got to be going back to a very very old podcast, Joe. Going to say like episode fourteen, fifteen, maybe somewhere around there. The whole conscious competence model. I think you've really got to almost remind yourself to do some of those things and keep reminding yourself and catching yourself and almost replaying interactions you've had to make sure you're doing them until they get into your mind and you're aware of it and they become things you do more and more naturally and it's a it's almost practice makes perfect i think with those those ways to try and try and force isn't the right word but you know push that mindset into how you are so it's really interesting you saying that as well like because i actually did that not it was probably about three years ago where I think it was an Evan Carmichael video, and and he, and uh, I don't know. I think it's one of his videos, but he sort of said to people, you know, you know, lot like Elon Musk seeks out real, radically honest feedback, right? So when I was first doing these hundred, you know, these videos where I was doing one every day, um, I wanted to, you know, early days when I was doing one a day, I, I I actually did seek out someone who was not on board with coaching at all, didn't think, don't believe in it don't believe no nlp does not work none of it and i thought oh and everyone come up with this you know ask someone where do you you know where do you suck are you, are you where are you terrible right and so i did seek their opinion i said to, i said to them where is it that i'm absolutely where do i suck or where is it that i'm absolutely terrible and when you launch that vulnerability and seek out people that are opposed but you sort of open up with vulnerability first to say hey where am i really really bad the first answer that came out of their mouth was you're not you're not that bad at all it's just what I would change is this, or what I would change is that, which I thought was really brilliant. Almost like by opening up with that vulnerability, you know, usually if I talk, oh, I think this is really great, I'm not going to say the name, they, they, they'll know who they are. This is really great, we should do this. It would just, they would just go, no, that's just terrible. They would then rebut, rebut with their view, right? But because I opened up and say, where am I really bad? Or where do I suck? It was like, well, you're not that bad. This is, but the, I, I would just. I think one of the feedback on the videos. Like, can you put a like um? Can you put a like um a, a, a label on the video so people know what it's about? And of course, I do that a lot now on TikTok, and I label the video. So, you know, so people when they watch the video on the TikTok, or whatever, they can actually see. Oh, this is about change, or this is about vulnerability, right? So on TikTok, you'll see I'll always put a little headline about what the video is about, so people can just select which ones they are. And those little bite-sized things. So when I do little clips of the podcast, that's what I put. So, so I learned from that the synergy of get the feedback oh this is quite good try the feedback and ever since then look at what's happened there's a lot of blowing up going on with these videos at the moment because they're actually on on youtube uh, we are getting loads of subs especially on shorts and the shorts are made of those little tiktok videos they are little, aren't they yes bit. so that's just a little little uh, example of where i actually did seek out someone who really opposed what i did but I, what how i did is i really were open up and vulnerable and actually left myself open to a whole attack which didn't happen and uh, a lot of time that does happen that actually people won't be as 
will not be as critical. They will actually give you something constructive to work on. So there it goes. That's the synergy for me. I like that. And I think that just the way of reframing that question gets you a totally different response. I love that. And like you said, you're, you're creating that environment of being able to work better with someone through the way you're framing the questions which is brilliant i really that's a really good thing and we would not honestly we didn't agree on anything like i say coaching is great this is great and every time i sort of framed it in oh this is great we should do it no this is i don't believe it at all it's rubbish it's just a load of load of turk it's all like da, 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 you know, and they'd always find information that rebuts it and things like that you know and um but when i framed it in that way it was totally different so I really, yeah, so this stuff works, just to say it works. 100%, uh, Joe, 100%. Yeah. So anyway, that, was my, that was my little story. Thanks, Lee, for that. I love that. Uh, actually, I've got Greta Queen. For, what's going on here? This is a podcast, Greta Queen. Uh, don't forget to rewatch. Go on, Lee, you're going to say something. I was going to say, head over to inspirationnation.org.uk. You can find out all about us and what we do. And of course, like people are doing now, Joe shouting them out. TikTok, Jay Noyer underscore Inspiration Nation. YouTube, just look for Jose Noyer Inspiration Nation. Hit subscribe, follow, and you'll find out when we're live each and every week and be able to get in on all the bite-sized content during the week too. I don't know how to, what I'm trying to do, actually. Uh, I just want to say stop motions. Thank you so, so much. I hope you're still here because they sent essentially almost 3.3k likes i don't know how they did stuff. it fantastic uh we've got 3.3k likes on tiktoks which is brilliant so thank you thank you so much we really do appreciate you uh it's massive so that's really really nice that's obviously going to get our live out there so thank you for liking on tiktok that's brilliant. brilliant we appreciate it right joe that was a great thing i enjoyed that that is six of seven is it not on stephen cody yeah. now we, so it. don't forget get the book i suppose i should just do a little bit of a play there you go so if you're if you're listening it's seven habits of highly effective people i've had this book for over 20 years and it's principle led it never goes out of date and the more you grow the more you need to read it because you'll just get different lessons from it so just keep you know it's one you you can you can just reread and just think, oh, i haven't done that for a while let me do that in fact i've not done that thing for a while but i probably need to do that more um, so yeah so again you've got the got the little action steps on there so let me know let us know how it goes 100 percent. speaking of growth follow us on twitter <laughs> at listen to i and t o i n and again youtube um tiktok everywhere else um and check out inspirationnation.org.uk tell friends and family about us get them to listen retweet our stuff hit like leave a review all of those things they are what help us grow it gets us in the algorithms it pushes it out to more people and it helps spread the message of inspiration and on that very self-indulgent shilling note joe i would count us down but you look like you're about to say thanks i don't want to cut you off no 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 i'm just i'm just waiting for you to end this because i know because i know you're you're about to do it so off you go Lee. <laughs> i'm just waiting for my, my moment to do the whole nation thing going on. but he's getting all excited all excited three two one inspiration nation inspiration nation Catch, Catch you guys, guys later. Later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions of what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.